just want to remind everyone that celebration of being Filipino does not end here today. We got to carry that everywhere we go. We got to carry that throughout the year. Spark, connect, and empower is a movement born in San Francisco to engender love and passion for Filipino heritage and culture among Filipino Americans. In the process, connecting them and empowering them as individuals and collectively as a community. Generation. Millennials, you are the future of the nation. Embrace your past, be proud of who you are. Spark, ignite your pride and curiosity. Connect. With one another and with your ancestry. Empower. Be the forefront of the community. Be proud of who you are. Be Magandang umaga po sa inyo mga kababayan natin no? dito po sa Bay Area at sa sampung jurisdiction ng uh, San Francisco Philippine Consulate General and of course because of the power of technology we're also able to reach other parts of the world where there are Filipinas. So uh, para sa inyo mga kababayan saan man kayo ngayong oras na to magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. So, nandito po tayo ngayon sa ikapitong uh, yugto ng ating tanong ni Konjen, isang discussion forum where we are able to ask uh, questions related to the operation of the consulate, but also we're able to discuss matters related to our culture and heritage. And for today's uh, episode nga, which we have uh, titled Celebrating Philippine Culture and Heritage Under the New Normal for today. We will uh, have two segments as always. Uh, we will have the first segment at uh, tatalakayin po natin ang isang importanting event na magaganap dito sa San Francisco and will be broadcast throughout the world. No? Uh, and so for that, we will have 
an important guest who has been the face ang mukha ng uh, organisasyon at activity na to no? that we sell, that we do every year and sa mahabang panahon na no? and we're very happy to have him here so uh, i-introduce ko po sa, sa inyong lahat kung sino ang guest natin mamaya po but on the second part po ng ating yugto for this morning we will also tackle po yung matters related to consular uh, services dito sa San Francisco and for today uh, mahalaga po na ma-discuss natin yung tungkol po sa consular outreach program ng San Francisco sapagkat ang San Francisco naman po, although tinatawag natin Consulate General in San Francisco, we actually take care uh, lahat ng mga kababayan natin sa uh, Sham na states or estado dito sa Amerika. At importante po dyan ang tinatawag natin consular outreach program. And so, Mamaya po, i-discuss natin yan sa ikaw, ikalawang yugto ng ating programa. But in the meantime, punta muna po tayo dito sa isang exciting segment natin. And I mentioned, may isang mahalagang pangyayari na magaganap itong Agosto. Actually, taon-taon ginaganap naman ito. Uh, to celebrate our culture and our heritage. And for that segment of our program, amin pong inimbitahan ang aming kaibigan ang kaibigan ng buong komunidad dito sa Bay Area, isang familiar face po, isang leader na talagang masasandigan natin uh, sa lahat ng uh, bagay, no? kahit na mahirap o magandaman ang kalagayan, nandiyan po yan. Napatunayan na po namin yan sa consulate dito. No? Totoong kaibigan po siya at totoong kaibigan ng komunidad at ng ating heritage. So for that po, ating inimbitahan ang ating kaibigan na si Al Perez. Siya po ang presidente ng Filipino-American Arts Exposition on the Pistahan Parade and Festival 2020. Sinabi ko po 2020, pero ang pistahan po matagal nang nandyan. Kung kaya naman, Ito, si Al po, ipapaliwanag po sa atin. Magandang umaga, Al! Sa'yo. Magandang umaga, Conchin. Thank you so much for that uh, very generous introduction. Thank you. Ay, thank you, Al. At uh, uh, pin, pinahalagahan mo itong programa namin sa iyong uh, presence. And so, uh, Al, bago natin talakayin itong magaganap nitong Agosto, pwede mo bang bigyan kami ng idea kung sino ka uh, 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 ng iyong background, Al. Sure. Sabi so, po. So, ako si Al Perez. Uh, ang, my day job is I'm a graphic designer and art director. Pero um, I'm also a, a community organizer. I like to volunteer and help the community where I can. Um, so, currently, I'm serving as President of the Filipino American Arts Exposition, kami po yung gumagawa ng annual pistahan. Uh, I'm also a part of different boards here in San Francisco, like the Filipino Food Movement. Uh, I was also uh, appointed by our mayor, uh, Mayor Gavin Newsom, to the San Francisco Entertainment Commission, and I was also appointed by our previous governor, Jerry Brown to the Cow Palace uh, board here in San Francisco. Oh, uh, actually, hindi niya kinumpleto. Marami pa ako. Pero, <laughs> uh, si Al po, when you talk of voluntarism, tsaka yung bayanihan, uh, siya po yan. Uh, dahil uh, uh, lagi po siyang nandyan pagkakailangan ninyo para sa komunidad. At uh, siya po ang mukha ng tinatawag nating pistahan, uh, parade and festival. So ngayon pong uh, magkakaroon po tuwain yan sa Agosto pero matagal na po yan actually. Al, pwede mo bang pakipaliwanag sa amin kung ano ba talaga tong pistahan, parade and festival? Uh, kailan ba nagsimula talaga yan? Ano, at ano ba talaga yan? Sure, yeah. So nagsimula iho yung pistahan uh, 27 years ago um, it's part of the really part of the history of the Filipino American experience, and part of this history of uh, displacement of our community. 
um, kasi about 26, 27 years ago, um, they created a redevelopment, big redevelopment project dito sa San Francisco to, to build yung um, Moscone Convention Center and the Yerba Buena Gardens Arts Complex. It's a big development uh, to promote tourism and business in San Francisco. But in the process of uh, creating this huge development, they ended up displacing about 4,000 Filipino families. Dun sila nakatira, so they were, um, they were asked to move away to make room for the construction. So, um, so the community um, founded the Pistahan out of the, the community's activism to, um, to preserve our community and honor our deep roots in San Francisco because we've always been kind of be displaced in, in San Francisco. That's part, part of our long history here in America. So uh, back then they said, you know, um, there's so many people were displaced because of this construction. So to honor our community, they decided to have a celebration, a festival. Doon sa Yerba Buena Gardens mismo, it's a big park. So the Pistan was the very, very first event held there. And again, it's kind of our way to reclaim our land, to celebrate our culture, our roots, and our community, to preserve it for the next generation. So that's the, the history of the Pistan. And the reason why it's in August and the July, uh, June, usually all the festivals are in June for Kalayaan. It's in August to tie also with the history uh, of displacement here in San Francisco. Uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with uh, the International Hotel here in San Francisco, uh, it's, um, uh, it's a um, single family, or a single room occupancy for a lot of uh, elderly and newly immigrated uh, people in, in San Francisco. Uh, that building was sold and the, the, the Manongs who were living there were, uh, were displaced. They were kicked out. So that happened. They were ultimately uh, removed uh, in the middle of the night from that building on August 4, 1977, the first weekend of August. So when the founders of Pistahan had a chance to create something to honor our community, they timed it so that it's the second weekend of August because we lost something big on the first weekend of August with the I Hotel. So we thought we're going to gain something back. And so it's going to be the Pistahan. We'll follow that. It's going to be on the second weekend. So that's our history. Oh, uh, yun pala yun, no? Finally now, no? we, we know. So marami po palang Pilipino dyan sa area na yan dati. Oh yeah. Up till now, this area is called South of Market or Soma. A lot of uh, Filipino communities are there because that used to be the the, the undesired uh, location in San Francisco, um, and so that's where a lot of the affordable housing were located. So that's why a lot of the immigrants, newly immigrated Filipinos, settled. And over time, because of the construction that happened and the gentrification is happening, it became now a very high tech location. In fact, a lot of new constructions are happening there. And again, that's part of what's happening is uh, a lot of uh, Filipinos who live in that community are continually being displaced because more and more construction is now being trendy. It's high tech. It's modern. There's a lot of uh, tech startups are, start, are opening their offices there. So, uh, so up to now, our community is being uh, threatened. So we're trying to do our best to to hold on to what we have and to uh, preserve our footprint and our culture in that particular neighborhood. At ang um, isang pamamaraan po ng pag-preserve ng ating kultura at heritage ang nabanggit ninyo, itong uh, pistahan. Uh, so, dyan po, dyan po pala nagsimula yan. Uh, pero bakit niyo po tinatawag na Pistahan Parade. May parada po ba yan? Yes, Konjian. There's a big parade. In fact, it's the only Filipino parade dito sa San Francisco. And San Francisco oh. is known for our big celebration and big parades. So this is our equivalent to the tradition of uh, parades in San Francisco. So it, uh, the parade marches on uh, Market Street, which is the main street of San Francisco, from the Civic Center... Uh, down market, uh, and then it goes to the Yerba Buena Gardens. 
Wow, so may parada. Pero nakikita ko rin po, tinatawag niya rin festival. So maliban po ba sa parada, ano po ba yung festival? Yan po ba katulad ng pis- piyesta sa atin sa Pilipinas? Yeah, Conji, very similar. Uh, merong, uh, it's the, the parade is on Saturday, pero yung festival is two days, usually on Saturday, on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's an outdoor fiesta, merong mga live entertainment, merong food booths, merong mga exhibitors so people can buy Philippine-inspired uh, apparel and merchandise and mga local organizations, meron din silang mga booths so that they can share uh, their information and services that they provide to the community. Mm-hmm. Nabanggit niyo po kanina, ito yung uh, preservation ng ating kultura dito sa San Francisco. Pero ito po ba ay para sa mga tao lang na nandito sa San Francisco o bukas po kayo sa mga ibang Pilipino sa lab- labas ng San Francisco? Yeah, bukas po ito sa lahat. Uh, Everybody is welcome. Uh, free admission. Um, and it's centrally located in San Francisco. Easily accessible. Kaya everybody is welcome to be a part of the Pistahan in San Francisco. In fact, uh, maraming taong dumadayo pa from uh, all over the West Coast, even from Hawaii, from other states, come to Pistahan. They time their vacation to San Francisco para they also can participate in the Pistahan. And this year, being a, a virtual celebration, now everybody around the world can experience and participate in the Pistahan. Oh, na, nabanggit niyo po uh, ngayon, no? So, oo nga, nasa, etong sa gitna ng pandemic po na meron ding shelter in place at hindi pinapayagan yung mga tao na magpulong-pulong uh, sa isang lugar, uh, paano po ninyo gagawin itong pistahan this year? Yes, Conjan. Yeah, so, yeah, because we are still uh, under local public health guidelines, uh, we decided to reimagine the Pistahan to be a virtual and online cultural experience. So um, all of the programming that we normally have during the Pistahan, all the elements of it will still be there, but now it's just going to be pre-recorded video and Lahatyan will be on our website, so people all over the world can come to our website, which is pistahan.net, and then they can click around on the different uh, pavilions. We have eight pavilions uh, in sports, in arts, in culinary, health, innovation, and so on and so forth. And then that's one way now people can discover Filipino culture through those pavilions. And then... Um, we also have um, a Sari Sari marketplace. So instead na usual, we have uh, booths for the exhibitor. Now online, we're just going to have a big space on our website. We have mga exhibitors and people can do online shopping at the convenience of your home and find a lot of these really, really amazing products by local Filipino entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. Um, uh, so yeah, they're really exciting. And then we also have a what we call a pop-up, uh, pop-up food court. So, kasi alam namin, people come to the Pistahan for the food. Everybody wants the lechon and the pancet, okoy, and things like that. So, to, so that we can still offer those experience, we are inviting Filipino restaurants all over the country to be part of our uh, pop-up food court. Uh, it's one-stop shop. People all over the country can find the nearest Filipino restaurant to them wherever you are in the country. And then you can pre-order your favorite fiesta um, meal and then you can enjoy it and have you can deliver it or have it uh, picked up and you can enjoy it while you are celebrating Pistahan with us. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so that's the website part. Pero we also are going to live stream uh, our live our programming uh, Facebook Live because uh, we know we want to have that live engagement with people and interaction. We do want people to chime in and comment from wherever they are. So we want to preserve that energy of live interaction. Kaya we're gonna have we're gonna broadcast webcast our programming uh, on Facebook Live through our Facebook page and also on YouTube. Um, so. 
so people can also follow us on that platform. So people can go back and forth from the live broadcast uh, and then they can go back to the website and then they can just kind of on their, on their own time, they can click around on the website and find something uh, to entertain them or to discover Filipino culture. In fact, one of the projects or um, features that we have in the website is the salute to the class of 2020. And we're partnering with you and your staff. Uh, you guys uh, created this beautiful uh, slideshow honoring the class of 2020. So we're also including that on our website to really uh, to, to celebrate this um, class of 2020 because they feel like they got shortchanged a little bit not having a celebration. So now we're going to celebrate as a whole community all over the world and we're going to shine a light on them. So that's going to be on the website also. Nice, nice. Pero uh, kailan nga ba ito al uh, mangyayari? Uh, ano yung, anong pecha? Apo. So um, it's always on the second weekend of August. So this year, August 8 and 9. So, so, so the website, people can go to the website at any time. Uh, but uh, on the Facebook Live, we will be live broadcasting from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. So five hours each day, Saturday and Sunday. So, dalawang araw. Ah, dalawang araw, Saturday at Sunday, no? Hmm? August 8 and August 9. Nine, correct. Uh, anong oras magsisimula ito, Al? Uh, magsisimula po ng 11 o'clock a.m. And then, and until hanggang 4 p.m. Saka on Saturday, we're going to have a virtual parade. Wow. So, we want everyone to participate. And all it takes is for everyone to record a 30 second video kind of like a tiktok challenge are you familiar with the tiktok challenge people kind of <laughs> have fun so, so create a 30 second video send it to us through our website pistahan.net you can register your parade contingent there and then gagawin namin, we're going to create a video we're going to stitch all the videos together and then that will be the virtual parade and what we always describe the parade anyway as a celebration of our diversity and our community and our, our, and our Pinoy pride. So we're still doing that in a virtual world, except there's no vehicles and there's no floats and there's no cars, but we're still able to do that on, as a video. So we hope that everybody can participate. We want submission from Pinoys all over the world. So I think it'll be a fun challenge for us to showcase our Pinoy pride uh, this year. So Al, uh, nabanggit mo open to, no? Para sa mga Pilipino kahit na sa Middle East o nasa Europe, yes. pwede silang mag-participate. So Correct. parada, pwede silang gumawa ng video yes. at ipadala sa inyo. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, Conjun, that's what we're, even though it's a challenging year this year, we're really embracing the power of technology to bring us all together. Even though we're not going to be in the same place together, we're really trying to make this experience really uh, to make the experience a fun experience where we can all gather as a community. We can check in with each other, make sure everybody's safe. And also, this is an opportunity for us to bring a little bit of positivity, a little bit of joy, a little bit of entertainment. And for us to reconnect with our culture, you know, everybody's kind of stuck in their homes. So we're hoping that this is an opportunity for us to get in touch with our community and our culture and have a little fun for the weekend. So, uh, Al, so, uh, narinig niyo po si Al, saan man kayo naroon uh, mga kabayan, sa East Coast man, Middle East, or Europe, pwede daw ho kayong gumawa ng... Uh, Parang video, ilang seconds? 30 seconds to 1 minute. 30 seconds to 1 minute at ipadala nyo uh, sa pistahan. Anong, web, anong website nila ipapadala, Al? Apo, uh, it's uh, pistahan.net. So, kabayan, pistahan.net. Diyan nila ipapadala. No? Meron ka bang uh, guidelines o criteria uh, tungkol dyan sa pwede nilang ipadala. Sabi, yeah. Opo, yeah. So, actually, meron kaming, the, all the information is on the website. Meron pa kaming tutorials. So, you can look at the video tutorial so you can oh. see the rules. So, of course, we want everyone to be safe. So, you can either do one person to represent the organization or you can bring everybody together in a big room and in a social distancing, create a video together. O kaya, you can do it as a Zoom call 
and have everybody part of the Zoom call and record that for 30 seconds to one minute and kind of show your Pinoy pride, wear your uh, f favorite Filipino outfit, record that, and then that's it. And submit it to us. And um, on the registration form, we will capture your information and things like that so that we can give you proper credit and identification on the video. And then we will uh, webcast that live on Saturday, August, uh, August 8th at 11 a.m. Nice, nice. So, tandaan nyo po yan, pistahan.net. Pumunta lang po kayo sa website nila para makita nyo rin kung ano yung guidelines o criteria. Wow, exciting. So, uh, hopefully makakita tayo ng mga iba-ibang aspeto ng ating kultura sa iba't ibang lugar ng mundo. No? So, eh, paano naman po yung mga gustong uh, ma ma i i i kanilang i-introduce yung kanilang mga produkto. Sabi nyo may exhibition hall kayo. So, yes. paano naman po ang, uh, halimbawa, yung ating kababayan sa East Coast o kaya doon po sa Middle East, ano po yung pwedeng nilang uh, gawin at paano po sila makakasali dyan sa pistahan ninyo? Yeah. Thank you, Conchan. So, yeah. So, meron kaming um, uh, Sari Sari Marketplace. And uh, this is a page in our website now, we can have a listing of all the different Filipino businesses. But if you want to uh, launch your product or merchandise or service uh, in a virtual platform, uh, you can submit that. You can be a part of our Sari Sari Marketplace because we're going to invite everybody in around the world to come to our website to do the Pistahan Weekend. Then you can be, uh, we can, uh, be, um, be discovered or you can sell and you can introduce your business through our Sari Sari Marketplace. And that's also on the website, uh, pistahan.net. There is a section along the top. You can, uh, you can uh, register as an um, exhibitor. Wow, nice. Exciting. So, uh, finally, uh, Al, uh, you know, si Al at um, Pistahan is also a very close collaborator po ng consulate, no? And so, as a partner po ng ating Spark Connect Empower, so, uh, sila Al po at Pistahan, merong, merong kaming collaboration po and uh, nabanggit niya na to kanina, pero baka pwede niyo pong ipaliwanag uli Al itong uh, project na to na yung uh, tungkol sa mga nag-graduate na Filipino-Americans at nabanggit niyo po parang ninakaw, no? Nung corona. Yeah! Ayaw nga ka. Ipaliwanag um... nga po ito, Al. Yeah, so this year, we wanted to pay special tribute to class of 2020 because they, they did not get to celebrate their graduation, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. So uh, we're collaborating with your, uh, with your staff, Ron Jen. Uh, I know you guys already started this slideshow, Salute to the Class of 2020. So we want to invite people all over the country and all over uh, the world if you know somebody who has, is a graduate of class of 2020, um, I guess we're going to send also a link to our website or contact the consulate uh, so you can submit the photographs of your family members or friends that are newly graduated. I guess it could be elementary, high school, college, and post-grad. As long as they're in class of 2020, they can be a part of this, and then um, they will create a video and we will uh, share they'll share it with us on our website so that we can all celebrate uh, this amazing very uh, um, smart Pinoy's uh, and we can give them the proper uh, celebration that they deserve. Wow very touching thank you uh, thank you John and uh, doon po sa pistahan.net no? Uh, tandaan nyo po mga kababayan, pistahan.net. So, any final words or final thoughts, uh, Al, uh, that you want to impart dito sa ating mga kababayan? Apo. Yeah, so I just want to get, I want to please save the date. So, August 8 and 9. Um, it's 11 to 4 Pacific time. It will be the live broadcast. Pero you can go to our website sa pistahan.net anytime during the weekend. To, to discover uh, and reconnect with different Filipino cultural programming now uh, we've been working on to, to share with everybody. Uh, so there's still time if you want to be a sponsor, if you want to be an exhibitor, Sasari Sari Marketplace, if you want to be a part of our pop-up uh, 
pop-up food court. Uh, or if you want to perform, if you are a performing artist, um, musician, dancer, we can still collect your video performance and for consideration to be a part of our entertainment lineup. Wow. Thank you very much, Al. And uh, uh, salamat sa Thank you. Uh, uh, magagandang proyekto. No? So, huwag kang magsasawa, Al. Uh, salamat. Yeah, you know what, Kanchen? Well, this is a labor of love, not just for me and for the entire Pistahan family. We call them the Pistahan Dream Team. So, I just want to take this opportunity to also thank the many, many Pistahan volunteers and, and, and core staff now, working very hard to work on this. You know, we're all volunteers uh, and we love sharing our culture and our traditions to everybody. And now we're so excited we get to share this on a global scale. So uh, I just want to thank them and give them a shout out for all the work that the staff has been doing. So I'm very grateful and we're looking forward to celebrating with everybody on Pistahan Weekend. Thank you all. Thank you. Sama mo na rin kami sa pagpapasalamat doon sa mga katipo, okay. sa lahat ng mga tao na nasa likod. So, salamat okay. po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Al. At, uh, tayo naman po ngayon ay pupunta sa ikalawang uh, segment ng ating programa at ito po ay magpo-focus naman dito sa mga consular services. So, sa uh, umaga na po ito, ating pong inimbitahan ng Deputy Consul General ng Philippine Consulate General in San Francisco na si... Uh, uh, Raquel Solano, uh, although tinatawag natin Consulate General in San Francisco, sa totoo lang po, eh, meron pong siyam na estado dito sa uh, West Coast and Pacific Northwest na under sa jurisdiction ng, uh, ng ating konsulado rito. At uh, therefore, mahalaga po na ma maibigay natin uh, mapag maibigay natin ng mga impormasyon diyan sa ating mga kababayan sa mga lugar na yan. So, ang tatalakayin po natin ngayong umaga ay itong uh, consular outreach. But uh, i-greet ko lang po muna si Deputy Consul General Raquel Solano. Magandang umaga po, ma'am. Magandang umaga, Conchen, at magandang umaga din al at sa ating mga tagapakinig po sa sa programang ito at sa mga sumusubaybay dito sa tanong ni Conche. Nasa ikapitong yung tuna po tayo at sana ipatuloy yung subaybayan dahil may mga informasyon po tayo na uh, gusto nating ipaabot sa inyo. Importante at critical na informasyon na makakatulong sa atin uh, sa ating uh, consular uh, related bids. Thank you po, uh, Ma'am Raquel. Ito e, po, uh, yung topic po natin ngayong umaga ay tungkol sa consular outreach. So, ang uh, Una ko pong tanong, I suppose, would be, kailan po kayo magkakaroon ng consular outreach? Halimbawa sa Alaska, sa Idaho, sa Wyoming, sa Seattle, sa Portland, uh, sa Montana, uh, sa Denver. Yan po yung mga estado na under sa jurisdiction. Kailan po kayo magkakaroon ng consular outreach kaya sa mga lugar na nabanggit? Ah, salamat ko, Jen, sa oportunidad na binigay nyo para masagot ang uh, katanungan na yan. Alam ko marami pong naghihintay ng uh, uh, informasyon o announcement kung kailan pupunta ang konsulado sa kanilang mga lugar para mag-conduct nitong tinatawag nating consular outreach. But bago ko po sagutin, sana po ay uh, mabigyan din ng pagkakataon na mailahad muna natin ang konteksto nitong consular outreach. Nabanggit nyo po ko na yun ako, Jen, na yung... Uh, Philippine Consulate General here in San Francisco. Bagamat ito ay nakabase dito sa San Francisco, ang kanyang jurisdiction o ang sakop niya extends to 10 states. Uh, kanina nabanggit nyo na yung Alaska and then Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, pababa hanggang dito sa Northern California. At uh, alam po ng, ating, eh, ng ilan sa ating mga kababayan na maraming Pilipino sa mga lugar na to, lalong-lalo na sa Washington, kung saan meron tayong 100, almost 100,000 uh, na mga Pilipino doon and then sa Alaska, mga 26 and Northern Nevada at sa iba't iba pa pong states. Uh, at uh, sa kabuuan ho, meron tayong around mga 1 million dito sa ating jurisdiction lamang and that is based on 2017 figures. Um, so, ibig sabihin, marami ang sineserbiho fan in terms of consular needs ng konsulado hindi lang dito sa Bay Area kung saan meron tayong 700,000. So, at alam po natin na sa layo ng mga 
areas under our jurisdiction. Alam natin yung hamon na kinakaharap ng ating mga kababayan para makakuha lamang ng serbisyo ng konsulado. Uh, kaya nabuo ko yung konsepto ng consular outreach. Dahil gusto natin um, maipaabot o mailapit ang serbisyo ng konsulado sa mga ating kababayan sa iba't ibang lugar. So balit ito pong consular outreach, hindi po ito tinatawag na regular program kasi ito ay subject to availability of funds and of course hindi lahat ng konsulado o embahada ng Pilipinas sa buong mundo ay may ganitong programa. So dito lang po at sa ibang, of course, sa ibang uh, konsulado dito sa US meron din pero hindi po to lahat. And since sinabi ko, nabanggit ko po na uh, subject to availability of funds dahil ito ay inaallocate ng ating national government, ng DFA Home Office. So kahit meron tayong mga i-propose ng mga consular outreach, ang uh, isang determining factor kung ilan ang maisasagawang consular outreach ng konsulado ay depende sa budget na ibinibigay sa atin. So ito po yung mga limitasyon na, uh, na, na kinakaharap natin pagdating dito sa pagsasagawa nitong consular outreach. Pero tinatry po natin na gawin o isagawa tong consular outreach to the best of our abilities and give, given also, of course, our budget and uh, manpower limitations. So, magmula po noong 2014, kung saan nagkaroon tayo ng 42 na consular outreach, pababa ng pababa po to dahil bumaba din yung budget na nare-receive natin. So, from 42 in 2014, naging 37, 30, 30 and then noong 2017, naging 15. Noong 2018, 15 uli, 2019, um, nagkaroon tayo ng walo na consular outreach. And then, nung ngayong 2020, although may nakaprograma tayo na walo din, uh, isa lang ang ating naisagawa at yun ay sa Washington. A, if I'm not mistaken, ito po sa, sa Tukwila. And then, uh, kaya ho ay... Uh, hindi lahat ay nabibigyan ng pagkakataon na mapuntahan dahil dito sa ating mga limitasyon. So kung napapansin po ng ating mga kababayan, merong mga panahon o may mga taon na merong pumupunta sa kanila and then sa susunod na taon nasa iba namang mga lugar. So ito po yung ating kinakaharap. So ngayon, nung 2020, may nakaprograma sana pero hindi ito na natuloy dahil nagkaroon na ho ng pandemic, ito yung pandemya na nalimitahan na rin ang ating paglabas because of course we are not uh, encouraged to uh, to travel, especially for non-essential travels and then may mga health protocols na kailangang sundin. Ito ay pinapasunod ng mga public health authorities kailangan tinatawag na social distancing or physical distancing. So iniiwasan din po natin yung mga pagtitipon o mga activities na kung saan nagkukumpol-kumpol yung mga tao. So, uh, yun po ang konteksto nitong sa uh, issue ng consular outreach. So, pag, so balikan ho natin yung tanong kung kailan, uh, given the budget limitations at saka yung limitasyon natin sa manpower and then because of this pandemic na kung saan, kay, hindi pa natin alam kung kailan to matatapos. Um, wala po tayo, wala tayo nakaschedule sa ngayon na consular outreach at hindi pa natin alam kung kailan to or kailan may i-schedule uli ang consular outreach sa mga areas under our jurisdiction. And uh, just to give you a timeline, hindi ho tayo, I do not expect any consular outreach to be conducted within the next 12 months. At least. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, 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 no? So pa- para lang sa paglilinaw, no. Etong 2020, meron kayong nakaprograma kahit na matitong budget niyo, no. At uh, isa diyan sa mga consular outreach niyo, nagawa na ninyo, no. Nung uh, kailan po ninyo nagawa 'yan? Um nung Marso po, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Or bago bago magkaroon ng bago pandemic. Ah, okay. So dahil sa pandemic Uh, ito pong nakaprograma na uh, base doon sa limited budget ninyo na nakaprograma na dahil sa pandemic e eh medyo hindi na po natuloy, no? Hindi na po tama. natuloy. At isa po, tama po yun, Conchen. At may isa pa pong dahilan, hindi ko lang nabanggit kanina. 
um, because of this pandemic, nag-adapt ng parang kinatawag ng mga fiscal austerity measures ang ating national government. Alam po ng ating mga kababayan na doon sa Pilipinas, nagbibigay ng mga tinatawag na social amelioration uh, uh, funds o may SAP na program na tinatawag, binibigyan yung ating mga kababayan na wala nang makain o para hindi sila lalabas o may nagbibigay ng rasyon doon. And then, uh, uh, may mga nire-repatriate din tayo ng mga kababayan sa iba't ibang bansa dahil na wala na sila ng trabaho at kailangan iiwi sa ating uh, bansa sa Pilipinas. So, kailangan, kailangan ng pondo ng ating gobyerno. Kung kaya't naglabas ng National Budget Circular yung ating DBM or Department of Budget and Management na kung saan inaatasan ang ating mga ahensya ng gobyerno na bawasan ang kanilang budget o kaltasan ng 45%. So sa ngayon po, uh, nabawasan ang ating tinatawag na MOOE o yung ating operation, uh, operational budget ng 45%. So malaking kaltas po to, So kahit may nakap programa tayo dati, hindi na natin din ito maitutuloy because of these budget cuts. So itong budget po nire-allocate basis sa priority ng government. But at any rate po, eh, natuloy din yung pandemya at uh, dahil sa pandemya na yan, eh, hindi po rin kayo basta-basta pwedeng lumabas no? dahil uh, sa risk po. No? At hindi lang po ito sa San Francisco because this is a global uh, phenomenon now. No? Kaya nga po tinawag natin pandemic. At, uh, at dahil dyan, hindi kayo basta pwedeng pumunta lang sa isang lugar at mag-conduct at mag-tipon-tipon ng mga tao para sa uh, consular outreach nyo. Tama po yan, no? Tama po yun, Conchen. Uh, at, uh, at dahil bu- din po sa pandemya, yung mga flights din po na cancel, etc. Uh, hindi, at hindi wala tayong kaalaman kung hanggang kailan po itong pandemya. Kung, kung kaya naman, dahil sa mga uncertainties na yan, mukhang hindi hindi po matutuloy yung mga consular outreach na una ninyong pinograma uh, before the pandemic. Tama po ba? Uh, Tama po yun. Uh, okay, uh, sige po. So, pero uh, uh, salamat po sa inyong paliwanag. So, uh, gustuhin naman po, kahit naman gustuhin ng, ng konsulado na magpunta dito sa mga lugar na ito, Uh, but dahil dito sa ating pandemic na talagang delikado at nakamamatay at uh, yung ating budget cut na 45% uh, percent po na nabanggit ninyo, no? uh, medyo mahirap pong gawin yan in the next 6 to 12 months, katulad yung nabanggit po ninyo. Uh, okay, salamat po. Eh, dahil po dyan, uh, paano naman po kaya yung mga kababayan natin na nangangailangan pa rin ng serbisyo? Uh, unahin ko po halimbawa, uh, sa pasaporte, paano po kaya sila makakapag-apply ng, uh, ng pasaporte? O, uh, either yung uh, may lakad po sila, although I think ngayon may pandemic, hindi basta-basta rin pwedeng bumiyahin. No? But just in case po, in case of emergency, halimbawa, paano po ninyo na, na mimitigate yung impact na yan? Ah, salamat po, Conjen. Um... Tandaan po natin na kahit uh, walang consular outreach na mangyayari, tuloy pa rin po yung serbisyo ng ating konsulado. So kung yung may mga kababayan po tayo na may kapasidad na pumunta dito sa San Francisco, pwede pa rin po silang pumunta dito para mag-apply ng pasaporte o kung anumang pangangailangan nila na related to consular needs. Uh, pwede po silang mag-avail ng services ng consulate provided that they seek the appointment. Meron tayong appointment system na tinatawag na kung saan masiservision tayo based sa appointment na makukuha din natin. Meron tayong yung uh, link sa Eventbrite na nandun sa ating website, yung philippinesanfrancisco.org at saka yung sparkconnectempower.com. Doon po makikita yung link sa event part kung saan pa pwedeng kumuha ng appointment ang ating mga kababayan. But aside from that, uh, meron po tayong mga pamamaraan may, na kung saan makakakuha pa rin ng serbisyo ang ating mga kababayan. Not necessarily yung hinihingi nila, kundi ma, matutulungan pa rin sila na makapagbiyahe. Halimbawa, um, lalo-lalo na kung emergency ang kanilang biyahe. So, sa case ho ng mga 
um, may mga urgent travels. Kailangan nila ng pasaporte pero hindi sila makapunta dito dahil malayo nga and because of uh, the, the uh, limitations din, pwede ho sila mag-apply ng tinatawag nating travel document o kaya pwede rin nating extend yung validity ng kanilang passport o kaya ipagpaliben din nila ang kanilang pag-apply ng pasaporte lalong-lalo na kung wala naman silang urgent travel and considering na wala namang penalty sa kung halimbawang late mo nang ma-renew ang inyong pasaporte. So dito ko sa tinatawag nating travel document, this is only valid for 30 days. Ito yung dokumento na in-issue natin. And this is good for one-way direct travel to the Philippines. Pero uh, at ibig sabihin, hindi po ito magagamit kung ang tao ay magta-travel papunta sa ibang bansa other than the Philippines. So una ho yan yung sa travel document. Ito naman po sa passport, extension of passport validity. Pwede po nating extend ang kanilang mga pasaporte provided na valid pa ang kanilang passport o pa-expire pa lang. At uh, pwede natin itong extend for maximum of one year from the date of application. Mm. So, pwede po nilang ipadala yon sa atin by mail. Hindi nila kailangan pumunta dito at bumiyahe para lamang may... Uh, Ma- makapag-apply nitong extension of passport validity. Uh, importante po yan, uh, DCG, ta- uh, linawin ko lang po. No? So, unang-una po ang sinabi ninyo, kung wala naman pong biyahe, wala namang urgency mag-renew ng passport. So, dahil may pandemya, kung mapupuspon nila at wala namang urgent na biyahe, mas mabuti po para sa kanilang kapakanan uh, at sa kanilang kalagayang uh, uh, related sa health, eh, mas magandang Uh, wag na muna magbiyahe. Pero kung gusto, pero kung may importante po silang biyahin, tulad ng sinabi ninyo, unang-una kong emergency, pwede naman po sila, uh, may, may mga several options po sila, t- tulad na nabanggit nyo. Number one, pwede po silang uh, tumawag sa emergency line natin dito at uh, magpa-renew, magbiyahe papunta rito at mag-renew ng passport. Tama po ba? Tama po. Uh, although, kung emergency naman at renewal, Medyo hindi rin sigurado yung, uh, yung kasi pinoprocess po yung passport sa Manila rin, eh, di ba? Medyo matagal din po yun dahil uh, unang-una walang, walang normal regular service ng mga, mga cargo planes. No? Uh, and so therefore yung pasaporte na minamanufacture sa Pilipinas, eh, medyo naantala rin yung pagdating dito. Tama po ba? Tama po yun, Conjent. Ah, okay. uh, yung, yung turnaround time po ng pagproseso ng sa pasaporte ay 4 to 6 weeks. So, Yan kung ganyan, rin katagal, so kung ganyan rin lang katagal at emergency, siguro, puro, siguro po mas maganda na imbis na magparinyo ng passport dito, i-avail na lang nila yung tinatawag nating travel document na nabanggit ninyo. Ito po yung one-way trip back to the Philippines. Tama po, no? At ang pinaka-importante po dyan, Uh, dyan sa travel document eh, hindi na nila kaya kailangang lumipad papunta ng San Francisco. Tama po ba? Tama yun, Conchen. Uh, ito po ay pwede nilang gawin by mail, no? Yes, sir. Uh, maglalakip lang sila ng uh, return envelope or the, may, ng kanilang uh, address uh, pabalik sa kanila, no? Ito lang yung ilalakip nila doon, no? But of course, may iba pang requirements yan. Uh, ano po ba yung mga requirements dyan, uh, DCG? Yung requirements po ng sa travel document, of course, yung uh, duly accomplished application form and then yung affidavit na kung sa, na yung usual na, na pinapa-accomplish natin sa mga aplikante na kung saan nilalagay nila yung detalye ng kanilang nawalang passport kung nalawa, nawala man yun o na-expire na passport, yung detalye noon and of course, uh, yung proof of urgency ng kanilang travel. So halimbawa, may may sakit o may medical emergency baka pwede ho silang magbigay ng uh, uh, medical report o kaya uh, medical certificate o kaya kung may namatayan sa pamilya namatayan uh, sa Pilipinas pwede, pwede silang magpadala sa atin ng copy ng death certificate para ma ma-prove nila na emergency nga yung kanilang travel but aside from that kailangan din ng copy ng kanilang ID o kaya kung meron sila ng kopya ng kanilang expired passport o kaya pa-expire pa lang na pasaporte, pwede nilang ipadala ho sa atin. And then yung four uh, pieces na 2x2 photos. 
Okay. So, Depende uh, pa rin po sa particular circumstances ng aplikante ko dyan, um, posibleng maghingi pa po tayo ng ibang requirements. Kagaya halimbawa kung nawala ang pasaporte at uh, valid pa nung nawala yun, hihingan po natin siya ng police report and then of course yung affidavit of loss. Uh, ito na yung mga special cases. Yes. Na, no? pero, pero sa madaling salita, kung kailangan nilang magbiyahe sa Pilipinas at emergency, kailangan, hindi na nila kailangan magparinyo ng passport. Kung kailangan na nilang makalipad at makabalik, pwede naman sila mag-apply ng travel agency, ng travel travel document. Hindi okay. travel agency, sorry. <laughs> Iba pala yan. Travel document. At ang requirements lang dito, essentially, sabi nyo nga po, application form, ipaliwanag kung bakit nag apply doon, at mga dokumento na nagpapatunin na Pilipino sila. No? So, yun lang po yun, essentially. No? And, uh, and this can be done by mail. Okay, Tama yun po, po yung, yung kodyan. Pwede ni, yun yung isang serbisyo na hindi nila kailangan uh, hindi nila kailangan pumunta pa ng konsulado para makuha so, lang. Okay. Pwede na ipadala so, sa atin by, by mail. So hindi na nila kailangan hintayin yung consular outreach na magpunta doon para mag-apply ng travel document. Kahit walang consular outreach doon, pwede na silang mag-apply ng travel document anytime by mail. Tama po yun. Okay. Pangalawang option po, kung hindi naman po in, uh, maliban uh, maliban doon sa travel document ang pangalawa po yung tinatawag nating sinabi ninyo kanina passport extension na no? tama po ba so okay so kung meron po silang passport na tingin nila mag-expire na halimbawa in August or in September or in December at tingin po nila baka magkaroon sila ng emergency minsan po hindi natin alam yung emergency gusto niyo lang po na meron kayong pinanghahawakan na dokumento na pagkailangan yung bumiyahe anytime, meron kayong pinanghahawakan na na pasaporte, no? So dito po, imbis na mag-renew, ang pwede nilang gawin tulad po ng nasabi niyo, passport extension. At ngayon po, normally bago po nagkaroon ng pandemic, bawal na po yung extension. Tama po ba? Tama po yun, Conchen. Uh, hindi na natin isinasagawa yun dahil pinagbawal na rin at based sa regulasyon ng ICAO or tinatawag natin International Civil Aviation Organization. Okay, so wala na pong extension, hindi na po ginagawa dati yan uh, before the pandemic. Pero dahil po nagkaroon ng pandemic, tulad ng nabanggit nyo na hindi na po, kasi yung renewal ng passport, kailangan mo personally mag-appear. Eh, no? And in in doing that na expose po kayo sa elements ng virus no so to mitigate or to minimize or to prevent uh, those unnecessary risk pinayagan po kayo o pinayagan tayo ng Manila DFA Manila na mag-extend ng passport hanggang kailan po uh, ang maximum po is one year one year bawa po mag-expire na yung aking passport ng August Bago po mag-expire ng August, pwede ko nang ipadala by mail sa inyo. Tama po ba? Tama po yun. Ah, okay. And then, ang extension, no? kung kailan nyo i-extend, good for one year na yan. Hanggang next year na yun. 12 months, no? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. So, kung uh, kung ganyan po, uh, ang importante dyan, hindi na nila kailangan lumipad papunta rito. No? Hindi na rin nila kailangan hintayin yung consular outreach na makapunta sa kanila Ngayon pa lang, uh, mismo now, as in now, ngayon, pwede na silang mag-apply ng passport extension. Tama po, no? Tama po, sir. And, and by mail. And uh, uh, ano po yung, tin- bakit po tinawag, kung natinawag na extension, pagka yung passport ko po ba nag-expire na nung May, pwede ko pa po bang ipa-extend yun? Uh, hindi na po ko dyan kasi ang ini-extend lang kung valid pa yung passport. So kung hmm. expired na po ang option ng ating kababayan ay mag-apply na lang ng travel document. Ah, okay, importante. So kaya po tinatawag na extension kasi valid pa. So yung extension is extension of the validity, no? Kung hindi na po valid, wala nang i-extend. So para sa mga kababayan natin, importante po that they have to look in their passport whether it's already expired or not. Ah, uh, at kung Sabi niyo po, kung expired na, ang option nila is a travel document. Ito po is under the assumption na meron silang importanteng biyahe. Hindi po yung pagpapapasyal, 
kundi yung emergency. No? Tama po, no? Uh, Tama and then, kung hindi pa expired, extension, passport extension ang i-apply nila. No? Ah, okay. So, importante pong malaman ng mga kababayan natin yan. Pero I think at the end of the day, as a matter of perhaps for lack of a better term, something like common sense, hindi po normal yung sitwasyon natin. Uh, number one po, may pandemia. Uh, at uh, uh, because of the pandemic, we're required sometimes in a, to be shelter in place no? at iwasan yung paglabas-labas kung kaya naman uh, we're encouraged to stay at home so that there's no unnecessary exposure to the virus no? and no unnecessary risk. So kung hindi naman po kailangang magbiyahe, siguro po tulad ng nasabi ni DCG, eh, mag-stay at home na lang po muna. No? Uh, but of course, pag may emergency, ito po yung dalawang option na available sa kanila tulad ng explanation ni, ni DCG. Uh, okay, eh, kung minsan wala rin namang eroplano, uh, DCG, no? uh, wala rin mga flights. Uh, at the same time, uh, DCG, yung po bang, yung po bang uh, uh, ibang serbisyo ng consular, uh, mapunta naman po ako sa ibang serbisyo, yung pong registration, tinatang natin civil registration o gusto ng mag-asawa na mag-report ng birth ng kanilang bagong bagong silang na sanggol o kaya report of marriage pa, paano po nila to may uh, magagawa kung walang consular outreach ah uh, kojan hindi naman po nila kailangang uh, pumunta dito or hindi rin ay kailang hintayin yung consular outreach na schedule sa kanila kanilang mga lugar para maisagawa yung mga yon kasi pwede nilang ipadala dito ang kanilang application for report of birth halimbawa may bagong silang na anak sa pamilya nila Pwede lang ipadala dito sa atin by mail. Ganon din ho sa tinatawag nating report of marriage. Ganon din uh, through mail. And yung report of death, salimbawa na matayan, and then kailang ipaalam sa atin at eh, may, para may forward din natin ang report of death doon sa Manila, pwede gawin nila yon by mail. So hindi kailangan pumunta dito o kaya uh, hintayin yung consular outreach. Ah, okay. So, yun naman pala. Pwede naman po lang gawin din ito by mail. So, uh, wag na po nating uh, i-expose yung sarili natin by being physically here because ito naman pala ay pwedeng gawin, gawin by mail. No? E doon naman po sa dual citizenship, DCG, uh, uh, pwede niyo ba kami bigyan ng idea kung ano po ang uh, uh, measures na ginagawa ng konsulado tungkol dito dahil sa pandemic? Uh, Kodya, dito po sa dual citizenship, importante pong maipaalam sa ating mga kababayan na kailangang uh, uh, yung application nila ay, ay pumunta sila dito sa atin for, para ma-file yung kanilang application. Pero yung may portion kasi sa dual citizenship na application, yung proseso doon, na may oath-taking. Although pinayagan na po tayong mag-conduct ng oath-taking by Zoom or by Uh, through online, kay kinakailangan pa rin po nilang pumirma sa mga dual citizenship documents in person. So, uh, okay. okay. So, may kalahating good news at may kalahating not so good news. So, uh, yung kalahating uh, good news, uh, 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 nirequest po ng mga foreign service post na kung pwede yung kanilang oath-taking eh, pwede na hong gawin by Zoom kasi uh, nakita naman po natin yung Integrated Bar of the Philippines nag-oath taking yung mga abogado via Zoom. No? So ngayon po pinayagan na to, no So yung oath taking pwede hong gawin by, via Zoom. Tama po ba? Tama po yun, Conchen. Pero Kung may isang parte ng, uh, ng proseso na uh, hindi na kailangan pumunta dito sa konsulado yung mga aplikante. Pero yung pag-file at pag-pirma doon sa mga dual citizenship documents dapat in-person yon So, ito yung kalahating not so good news. So, yung kalahating good news, pwede lang yung oath by Zoom. Pero yung kalahating not so good news and hopefully maging good news in the future, eh yung, yung papel, kailangan pa rin nilang pumunta rito at pirmahan. Ano? Tama po yun. Tama po yun. Sayang. Akala ko... Pwede na. Eh, hindi bale, 
ang ang good news naman dito eh, medyo yung konsulado po na, na narinig ko po na meron kayong pending request sa sa Pilipinas na baka pwede na rin nilang payagan yung pagpirma uh, in in a different way no pero baka binuko ko po na uh, 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 ano uh, uh, ayo uh, pasensya na po kaya medyo na nadulas yung act uh, pero may ganyang effort po na hopefully dahil sa pandemic eh magkaroon ng relaxation ng guidelines okay. sinagawa naman po ng ating gobyerno uh, sa Manila at dito kung ano yung mga pwede no so hindi naman po tayo sumusuko uh, para maghanap ng solusyon unfortunately po pag wala pang otoridad medyo hindi pa ho natin uh, pwedeng gawin pero uh, at the same time pinagdadasal po natin na yung natitirang kalahating not so good news ay eh, maging 100% good news. Tama po, DCG, no? Tama po yun, ko Diyan sa katunayan po, yung ating proposal na kung pwedeng i-relax yung rules pagdating dyan sa pagpirma ng mga in-person ng mga dual citizenship documents ay pinag-aaralan doon sa Pilipinas and actually, yung Office of Consular Affairs ng DFA uh, ay may nakaschedule silang meeting with the Bureau of Immigration para pag-usapan yung bagay na yan. Kasi yung BI po yung implementing agency pagdating dyan sa dual citizenship na issue at hindi po yung DFA. So they have to coordinate. I mean, yung ating DFA authorities have to coordinate with the BI in order to uh, discuss the issue and uh, see if it's uh, legally feasible. Okay, maraming salamat po dyan sa sa balita na at least it gives us hope no kasi hindi na sa totoo lang hindi naman talaga natin alam kung hanggang kailan tong pandemic and so we have to learn how to adapt to this new normal no so yung mga dating conventional maybe there's a way and so i think we give credit to to the government and those people who who want to help and to do service for continuously exploring possibilities no and uh, and uh, uh, hopefully one day we, we will have an answer to this no? because uh, at least we know that good people back in Manila are exploring how they can help us uh, address this matter. No? Tama, DCG, no? Ima po yun, Conchen. Ah, okay. O, sige. So, in, in a sense, ito pong mga nabanggit niya, ito yung mga, ito yung mga, mga measures na ina-adapt ng Consulado together with Manila uh, para ma-alleviate yung sitwasyon na walang consular outreach no? uh, in the meantime. So, uh, katulad po nang nabanggit nyo DCG kanina, gusto po nating magpunta sa mga bawat lugar uh, para maibigay natin at maipamahagi natin ang mga servisyo na kinakailangan ng ating kababayan doon sa mga lugar na malayo sa atin. No? Uh, data po at subalit po, dahil naman po, hindi naman po natin kagustuhan na magkaroon ng pandemic na to, eh kailangan po nating mag-adjust. At uh, uh, in the meantime, we have to be smart and we have to try to protect ourselves, our families, and other people uh, by not unduly exposing ourselves uh, to, to the virus, by uh, making unnecessary trips. And so, in that sense, naapektuhan po yung ating consular outreach because of the risk Actually, it's not just the risk, but the real danger posed to our lives and also doon sa mga tao magpupunta sa atin. No? Kasi pag nag-consular outreach po, kayo doon, eh, wala pong gar- garantiya na yung mga tao na nagpupulong-pulong doon ay eh, eh, protected. Ano? And we are also trying to avoid that and we're also trying to abide by the regulations, not just of the city government, of uh, San Francisco or the state of California, but we also abide with the regulations of Alaska, of Idaho, of Montana, of Washington, of Oregon, na magkaroon po ng practice na walang pulong-pulong ng maraming tao because when you have that large gathering, that's when the danger or the risk increases as well uh, for exposure to the virus. And so, siguro po, kailangan din nating gampanan yung ating mga roles no ang ating responsibilidad hindi lamang sa ating sarili kundi doon din sa kapakanan ng ating pamilya first and foremost at kapakanan ng uh, ibang tao rin and so this is true for anybody whether you are an employee or staff of, of or officers of the consulate general you have to be responsible at the same time 
if you are on the side of uh, mga kababayan natin na nag -abil, we also have to exercise that responsibility. Tama po, uh, DCG. Tama po yun, Kodjen. So, okay. So, in the meantime po, uh, ito yung ating mga adjustments to the new normal. What is important is that we're able to overcome this. Na? And uh, uh, we will not give up human as we are, good Filipinos as we are, we will continue to adapt and we will continue to find ways and means how to overcome these challenges. No? I, I think that's that's more important. So, DCG, maraming salamat po. Meron po po kayong gustong ipa ipamahagi sa ating mga kababayan? Uh, Konjen, salamat po. Uh, gusto lang po natin paalam din sa ating mga kababayan yung si issue ng sa dual citizenship. Kung talagang kinakailangan na bumiyahe sila sa atin at kailangan nila mag-apply ng uh, du for dual citizenship, pwede po silang tumawag sa ating emergency hot or hotline number which is 1415-269-2090 or pwede silang mag-email sa atin sa ating emergency dot sfpcg at gmail.com kasi wow. uh, binibigyan din po naman natin ng, ng pagkakataon ang ating mga kababayan na nasa ganung mga sitwasyon na maibigay ang ating serbisyo sa kanila and wow. nag address naman po tayo Nako, importante po yung DCG buti na banggit ninyo kasi kanina sinabi ninyo kung may importanteng biyahe uh, either mag-apply ng travel document number one or ng passport extension. Uh, importante po yan dahil bago, kung kailangan nyo pumasok ng Pilipinas, kailangan nyo Pilipino kayo. At meron kayong either travel document or passport para makapasok ng Pilipinas. Dahil sa pandemya po sa ngayon, yung mga non-Filipino passport holders eh hindi makakapasok ng Pilipinas. No? Tama po, no? TCG. Tama po, tama uh, po yung uh, Even the balikbayan, yung dating Pilipino, Dati ang balikbayan pwedeng pumasok kahit wala silang Philippine passport as balikbayan they can enter. Pero sa ngayon po dahil sa bagong regulation in the context of the pandemic, kahit balikbayan hindi po pwedeng pumasok uh, pag wala silang Philippine passport talaga. So, nabanggit ko po 'yan kasi sinabi niyo rin ang is ang may ikatlong option po pala doon sa sa sa, uh, sa pinag-usapan natin. So, travel document, kung hindi passport extension yung third option pala DCG ay yung dual citizenship no uh, DCG so kahit wala silang passport pero pagka nag dual sila meron silang pwedeng ipakita yung certificate of dual citizenship ba yung ba yung tinatawag ninyo DCG? yung mga dual citizenship documents kon yung po yung ating uh, uh, identification certificate na i-issue yung order of approval sa kayong oath of allegiance kailangan pong i-present yon ng isang uh, dual citizenship ay dual citizen kapag magta-travel siya sa doon sa atin sa Pilipinas uh, kahit wala po siyang Philippine passport nako yan ang importante kahit walang passport ang isang Pilipino uh, pwede pa rin siya makapasok ng Pilipinas pagka dual siya at hindi pa siya nakakakuha ng passport pwede niya nang ipakita yung mga dokumentong nabanggit niyo Yan po yung tatlong option para makauwi ng Pilipinas. No? Pero at the end of the day, kung hindi naman po kailangan bumiyahe, eh, pagpasensya nyo na po, mga kababayan, hindi naman po ako nag, nagmamatalino sa inyo, pero siguro pakiusap, kung hindi naman po kailangan bumiyahe, siguro po mas mabuti na magstay na lang muna tayo para lang sigurado po at hindi tayo mahawa o hindi tayo makahawa uh, para na rin sa proteksyon ng inyong buhay, ng buhay ng mga minamali nyo, at buhay na rin ng ibang tao. Uh, hindi naman po namin nagmamagaling o ini-impose pasensya na po kayo. Parang suggestion lang po yan uh, para sa kapakanan ninyo. So, at any rate, kung talaga pong nandun kayo sa sitwasyon na kailangan nyo bumiyahe, ito po yung tatlong options na pwede nyo pong tandaan. At uh, yung dalawang first two options, hindi nyo na kailangan pumunta ng consulate. Unfortunately, doon sa ikatlong option ng dual citizenship, eh, uh, hanggat hindi pa ho nahanapan ng solusyon uh, doon sa Pilipinas kung paano gagawin yung, yung Zoom o yung virtual uh, application, eh, in the meantime po, unfortunately, you still have to come dito sa consulate. 
uh, so okay Ho- hopefully po sana malinaw po malinaw po sa atin yan so thank you DCG sa inyong uh, paliwanag uh, at uh, uh, doon ang po sa ating mga kababayan uh, hindi pa po tapos ang pandemya tuloy-tuloy po tayong magdasal uh, para ma lagpasan natin ang mga pagsubok na ito no? at uh, pagdasal po natin uh, na mabigyan ng solusyon sana ang virus na to at pagdasal po natin ang kaligtasan uh, ninyo, ng inyong pamilya at ng, ng sambayan ng uh, mga tao. No? Uh, hindi lang po Pilipino kundi lahat po ng human beings no? uh, because every human life uh, is priceless. Uh, and so, uh, on the practical side, we continue to practice personal hygiene. Yung pong mga malilit na bagay, gawin na po natin habit, paggugas ng kamay, paglagay ng sanitizer, paglagay ng mask uh, uh, kung nasa labas po tayo. At uh, unfortunately, yan po ang ating bagong normal for now. But uh, we continue to pray that uh, things will get better. And I have no doubt naman po that things will eventually get better. Uh, so hanggang sa muli pong uh, yugto ng ating tanong ni Konjen, huwag niyo pong kakalimutan, mag-ingat po kayo, at uh, huwag niyo rin pong kalimutan, Pinoy ako, proud ako. Maraming beses na kitang nilayasan Iniwanan na ibang pinuntahan Parang babaeng ang hirap talagang malimutan Ikaw lamang ang aking laging Pinabalikan Manila I keep coming back to Manila Simply Our online celebration commemorates the 122nd anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence. I know, Dom, we are still in a pandemic and times are really tough right now, but that's not stopping us from celebrating our Filipino history, our culture, and our pride. And you know, tonight is the night to also honor the men and women who have really sacrificed so much amid the pandemic, our frontliners. Mabuhay! Hi, Sir Henry. Kamusta po kayo? We are uh, okay here and uh, we're enjoying, uh, we enjoyed your reception and then we also want to congratulate you for your uh, uh, celebration of the 122nd uh, Philippine and, uh, Independence Day. And promise me you never Ryan K. Abyab and the Ryan K. Abyab singers, thank you very much. Now, to cap our program, we wish to leave you with a video prepared by the Philippine Consulate General in San Francisco to honor Filipino frontliners all over the world. Mabuhay po kayo. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much po and have a good, have a good night or have a good morning. Thank you, thank you. Good night. Tinoy ako, proud ako.